everyone. I'm Paul and welcome to Ad Espresso September webinar. So as the title says there, we're going to be discussing today how to maximise your results in Q4, which is coming up very soon, and the holiday season using both Facebook and Google Ads. So just before we get stuck into this topic, um, a little bit of housekeeping for you. Uh, the most common question we get asked is, are we recording? Yes, we are recording, um, probably within a couple of hours after this broadcast. And we will send it out to you by email. I'm also aware that sometimes emails don't arrive due to spam filters or your uh, privacy settings. So we also put it on our uh, YouTube channel. Just search for Ad Espresso on YouTube. So it's probably going to be a couple of hours or so after this live session, we'll put it on there. Um, this is designed to be a really interactive session. If you've got any questions, please ask them as we go along. My colleague Tori is going to be monitoring chat there. And then what we'll do at the end of the session, we'll get through as much Q&A as possible. We'd also like you to um, just put in the um, chat box there where you're from, where you're joining us from today. And um, we'd like to really see who's interacting with us. We've already got Amanda who's saying she's really excited about this webinar. So yeah, just go and type in there where you're from. That's going to be uh, really useful there. So before we get into today's strategy, you might want to be wondering what my qualifications are for uh, delivering this strategy today. Um, so my name's Paul, I'm Head of Education here at Ad Espresso. Um, if you've got any questions after the webinar or you're watching the replay, you can always contact me at paul at adespresso.com, always welcome questions. If you've just got any general questions for Ad Espresso, you can go onto our website, adespresso.com, or you can tweet at Ad Espresso there. Hey, we've got Brandon joining us from Austin and CJ from San Diego. So welcome today. Um, my experience there for, uh, with Facebook and Google campaigns are very privileged that I've run, um, but I've audited over a thousand ad accounts. These are from loads of different industries all over the world. So I really get that broad overview of what's working, what's not for paid advertising. Personally, manage about one to two million of ad spend a year for uh, clients. I coach businesses of all sizes. Um, I do a lot of coaching for small, medium businesses, but also enterprise clients, some with a billion dollars plus revenue. So they've got some quite serious ad spend there. So what are we going to do today? Well, this is a picture from the Black Friday rush. You've probably seen these on uh, TV and on the internet. And really what we're trying to do is replicate this for you um, online, but in a much calmer, much controlled way than, than this. So we're trying to really see how we can maximize those holiday sales there. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this up. First of all, we're just going to set the scene with an overview for you there. And then I think the key to success for the holiday season is to split it up into four phases and really have your strategy dialed in for each of these. And we're going to cover these in depth. But the first phase is the warm up phase, which is basically now until yeah, it probably covers October, beginning of November. So this is where you're, you're doing your testing, you're doing all your optimization there, you're getting your offers dialed in, everything like that. Um, phase two, that's going to be the main event. This is when you're really packing in the sales. This is when we really just ramp up all our, our purchase um, campaigns there. Um, that's going to be centered around Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We'll come to those dates in a second. Um, Phase three, that's how you maximize sales. We don't want to take the foot off the gas after Cyber Monday. We've still got December. Um, there's much more of a sense of urgency there. So that's when we can look at some strategies to maximize your sales. And then phase four, something that a lot of people leave out, but it's one of my favorite phases, is post-holiday season, January and February, when we can uh, get some extra sales in there. So let's go and set the scene with an overview here. First of all, we can look at some of the key dates for 2019. Um, the first one is Singles Day. It's something that's very big in China and in Asia. Um, hasn't really caught on yet in America and Europe, but um, in terms of volume of sales, it's quite big. And there's certainly some hints that it's going to start catching on in the rest of the world. So it's something that should be on your radar there. That's like the first uh, date in your sales calendar. Next dates, we've then got Thanksgiving. And that, of course, leads into the, the main event, which is Black Friday. Um, that's when you get really big volume of discounts and sales there. We do find that Black Friday is actually starting earlier and earlier. Is that, you know, everybody started putting it on Thursday and then Wednesday. And now you'll find that beginning of that week, kind of from the Monday onwards, people are starting to offer quite deep discounts. So make sure that you, you don't just put these offers out there on Friday. You need to have some offers ready to go before that. 
and then have a slide later on about small business Saturday. We'll cover that more then. And then, of course, the, the weekend rounds out with Cyber Monday. And then we go into Giving Tuesday. Again, I've got a little slide about that for you later. Um, and then Green Monday. Green Monday is quite a minor thing, but it's usually the biggest um, selling day in December. But one thing that I want you to note here is Cyber Monday, really late this year. Normally, it's about six days earlier. So what that means is we've got a very short selling season. Um, so we've got to have everything in place. Once we get into Cyber Monday, there's very little time left. Um, certainly, if you're in the US, a lot of times last shipping dates can sometimes be like the 15th, the middle of the month there. So you've only got a couple of weeks after that Cyber Monday. So it means that there's going to be no time to test, experiment, refine your offers. This is why we're having this webinar now. So you can start planning, make sure all your assets, all your audiences, all your offers, all your optimization is in place because it's going to be such a short selling season this year. I think that's about the latest that it can be there. Um, this is some data from Shopify. I'll be I'll be giving you the handout later on this. Um, but Shopify have surveyed some of their largest clients and said, okay, what kind of paid channels are you using for you for well, paid and organic channels here? And you can see that Facebook and Instagram, they're of course uh, Instagram's owned by Facebook. They use the same ad platform. They're the biggest for new customer acquisition. Um, paid search, so we're talking Google Ads there, is number three. A bit of Instagram there, that's really good just for that discovery. And then we've got organic Google here, SEO. So this is why this webinar is being focused on Facebook and Google. I know there's loads of other platforms, they've all got their benefits. You've got TikTok and you know, Quora and Pinterest and Snapchat and Reddit ads and all sorts of different ads out there. Um, but really to drive that that big volume of sales, you want to be looking at Facebook and Instagram together. Um, if I talk about Facebook, I'm also meaning Instagram and Google Ads. They're going to be the key drivers of your sales there. Now, um, this is something, some research we did at Ad Espresso. This is a graph of your cost per click by month and um, results from last completed year, say 2018. So this is looking at the price on Facebook of getting traffic through to your website. Now, the key thing about the way that Facebook works is that every time you, you put an ad, it goes into an auction. So there isn't a set price. There's not a set CPC. It depends on the volume of advertisers bidding for that ad space. Um, now, the inventory, the amount of space on Facebook doesn't really change much throughout the year. So what happens is that as the year goes on, more and more people will, as you get into Q4, are bidding on that ad space. The retailers are dumping in large amounts of budget. Uh, there's not that much room for the ads. So that cost per click is just going to go up. And, you know, quite a simple trend here. Q1 in the year, nice and cheap. Q2, Q3, uh, moderate priced. And then it just ramps up for that last three months of the year. So we can see that the strategy that we might use in January and February, where we can just rely on cheap clicks, that's not going to work here um, in Q4. We're going to have to get really clever, get really savvy there. Um, by the way, any numbers I show you, don't worry about those too much. Um, they're going to be different for every advertiser. Um, depends on the placement, depends on the country. Take home message is just that prices are going to rise here. Um, I want to show you a little case study as well. This is from one of my clients. And we've got two lines here. So this is from October to January. And, and I think this is a nice illustration of what happens in Q4. So if we look at this kind of turquoisey green line here, um, this is your CPM, your cost per thousand impressions. And it goes up from $10 in October to $25, just over $25 there um, in December. So that's a two and a half X increase in your cost to serve impressions. Uh, if we look at this brownie orange line here, your CPC, that cost per click, then it goes from a dollar to well over three dollars there. So we've got over a 3x uh, increase in traffic costs. Again, don't worry about the exact numbers. You can just see we've got two and a half x increase in impressions, over three, three and a half x increase in your cost per click. So this is what we've got to battle against as advertisers. Really, really important that we have that strategy dialed in there. Um, another kind of graphic, and I'm kind of really hammering this point at home here, but it's really crucial that you understand how much price is going to rise. <clears throat> this is from the Shopify handout that I'll reference uh, very soon. And we can see that the average um, cost per click there um, on Black Friday, it's 140% um, time there, times their baseline. So it goes up from 70 cents to $1.68. 
Again, don't worry about the prices exactly, but you can see that we've got this very, very big increase there. Um, and something as well that we've got to consider is that the um, average order value, which is you know the, the, the amount that people are spending uh, in their basket, isn't going up significantly. It's only going up by 1.5%. So it's costing a lot more to drive people through to the site, but when we get into the site, they're not actually spending any more. Um, so that's the kind of bad news. Now we've got that out of the way. Let's look at some good news. Um, the, the reason why I'm really excited about Q4 is although prices are high, there's a lot of money on the table there. Um, this is data from Facebook's Pixel. So the Facebook Pixel is on hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of websites. And what we can see here is this is the sales volume. This, this kind of solid white line is the baseline. And then look at the spike. So this is Singles Day here. That's why I mentioned it earlier. When we look at worldwide data, it's a huge driver of sales there. Black Friday main event, you can see this huge spike here. Um, and the sales increased very quickly, very little time to uh, prepare for it. That's why we need our strategy dialed in there. And then Cyber Monday, another peak. And generally we can see that overall for most of December, very, very good volume of sales that we get to last shipping day, things start to tear off then. And then we kind of, we stay above the baseline. Um, this is what we call phase four in January. So still some good sales there, but yeah. This is where we, we can get some money in. So we're paying a lot for traffic, but the conversion rate is going to be much higher on your website. The intent is there. People come to your site and they're ready to purchase. Um, this is some data from our friends at Tenuity. Again, I'll be referencing this handout very soon. Um, but this is um, US-based survey. Look at how much people are going to spend on holiday gifts. And look, we can see how much money there is on the table there. Um, most people are spending $250 to $500 on holiday gifts. There's a significant amount spending $500 to $1,000. And even this year, the, the number of people spending over $1,000 is going to get a lot, lot higher. Um, and most people are spending at least $100. So the amount of money that we've got there, it's serious money that we can get there. Um, just see some questions coming in. Amanda's saying, um, can you get a copy of the slides? Um, just a reminder that we'll put this webinar on YouTube there so you can... Um, you can view everything then pause it and look at the slides because I know there's quite a lot of data to take in but hopefully that kind of sets the scene for you that we can see very expensive distribution costs um, expensive traffic costs but a lot of money people are spending huge amounts and the conversion rates are going to be good so let's dive into some strategies now that we can use for these four phases. So we're gonna start with phase one, which is gonna be your warm up, which as I said earlier, is kind of now until we get into um, middle of November. <clears throat> so warm up, the reason it's important is really for discovery, is these are some quotes from Facebook that you know, at least half of holiday shoppers begin research in October or earlier. So if we want them to put us our products on their Christmas lists, uh, that then this is the time to start getting that awareness there. And last year, 30% um, of shoppers actually completed their, their main shopping before Thanksgiving. Um, obviously some very organized people there, but I will say personally, you know, I've done some of my Christmas shopping already. I've kind of got an idea of the main things that I'm going to be asking for. So that's where ads now can have a really good effect. So even if they're not driving sales, they're driving that awareness there. Um, so some homework for you in phase one about doing that preparation is if you go to go to webinar panel, um, you can download some handouts there. Now, if you're watching the replay on YouTube, if you go to the notes on YouTube just below, you'll see that there's um, the links to all these handouts. Or, you know, if you don't have time watching this live session, just go into our YouTube uh, presentation and you'll get them there. But the uh, presentations I've got for you, there's the Facebook holiday marketing guide. Um, really detailed guide there and it kind of gives you some planners as well you can actually go and print it out and go and write in the campaigns that you want the targeting the offers and so on so that's a nice guide for Facebook um, exactly the same kind of idea on Google there they've got the holiday retail playbook so you can download that there so you just go to go to webinar panel you can download that there <clears throat> then Shopify they're probably the largest um, drivers of e-commerce so they've got their own playbook as well and like we saw some of the um, graphics earlier they surveyed their top 50 brands and asked them for some of their insights 
Then finally, we haven't got this available for download today, but just go onto their website. Um, I've got the link here, but just Google Tenuity um, 2019 Holiday Guide and you should find it. So Tenuity, um, an agency in the US, and, and they surveyed lots of shoppers. So this is nice uh, data here. It's actually coming from the shoppers themselves there. So some nice insights um, to help you prepare your strategy. Um, once you've um, read all these guides, um, don't read them all at once, but once, once you've done your research there, then I would suggest that if you're running Facebook, that you can do some research on your competitors. And luckily, quite recently, this is to do with like political transparency, but it also helps us for e-commerce is that Facebook have launched their free and official um, ads library. Um, it shows all current ads. It doesn't show ad archives unless they're political ads, but it won't show them for e-commerce, but you can see anything that's currently running. So just go to facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash library, or again, you can just Google Facebook ads library and you should find that there. And that's gonna be very useful. So if you've got an idea, okay, what should I be running? Um, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, just look at your competitors. These are some examples from Hootsuite, our parent company. You can see all the kind of different designs that they use and you can get some ad copies. So do that for some of your competitors. Um, you can filter it by country and you can choose the brand that you want to follow on there. If you can't find ads from the brand that you're looking for, go onto their Facebook page. Then if you go to the right hand column and scroll down, you'll see this box, page transparency. Uh, it's bowed away a bit, but it will be there. Um, then you click on the see more button. And then if you go to the summary and go to the bottom of there, again, it's kind of buried away, but you'll get a link directly to their page on the Facebook ads library. So great way of doing some uh, research there to prepare your ads well in advance. You could also do some good um, competitor research on Google. You can use Google Shopping Insights. Again, just Google it, you'll find it straight away. I was using that earlier. You don't have to register or have like a Google ad account. Um, this data is based for US only, but I think you'll find it useful wherever you are in the world. And what you can do is basically put a search term in there and you get those search volumes. You can then put in another brand and you can compare the two head to head. You can look at different shopping seasons. You can look at different regions within the US. Um, so this is really, really good insights for you. So I recommend just going to Google Shopping Insights. Even if you're not running Google Ads, that's going to be very useful for you. Another bit of the preparation that we want to be doing in phase one is optimizing your website for mobile experience. These are some figures from that Google playbook that I um, just shown you that uh, in the last two years, the number of people searching for online shopping on mobile has gone up 180 percent. And this to me is a very scary statistic is that a one second delay on mobile load times can impact mobile conversions by up to 20 percent. So we need what uh, Google called a frictionless experience is that we need to make mobile one of our main channels. Um, I certainly see that when I'm running Facebook ads, the real volume is coming from Facebook. So from Facebook, mobile and Instagram, not much from desktop. Um, how you stand out from the competitors? There's still a lot of dinosaurs there without mobile optimized websites. And it's really going to help you minimize that drop off and help you maximize sales. Um, one little tool that can help you optimize your website um, and Google have got so many tools for you there. You can use test my site. So again, you can Google, just put in there, Google test my site and it should come up or the link is here. And you put in your URL and their bot goes and scans your website and gives you some actionable tips on how to increase your site speed there. So once you've got your site optimized, next thing we need to do is optimize our ads. And if you look on the Ad Espresso website, adespresso.com forward slash blog, we, we publish a thousand dollar experiment every month. This is where we put a thousand dollars of our own money behind experiments and see what different split testing makes. And time and time again, a simple A-B test can halve your ad prices. Um, this is just an example here where we tested like a square uh, video animation versus a landscape faced camera. The Cost per lead went from like $3.89 up to $7.62. Um, that's kind of double there. Just the even CTA button, that call to action button um, can make a big difference. Like it can go from $5 up to uh, nearly double. If you don't put a button at all, it can be even higher there. Um, take home messages, don't worry too much about the buttons that we're showing you. For e-commerce, you're gonna be using different ones, mainly shop now versus learn more. Um, but just like, these simple split tests are really going to cut your cost down. So when you're paying 3x the baseline price for traffic, 
going to make a huge difference for you. So you're going to be testing your images, testing videos, headline, add text, call to action button there, and maybe placements and audiences. You can do exactly the same on Google. Um, we're all about split testing within AdEspresso. If you use our, our Google Ads tool, anywhere that you see a plus button, you can be split testing your ads there. So you can be testing different headlines, different URLs, different descriptions, and really drive down the cost from your Google search ads. So can't stress enough how important that optimization is. Um, also, what we need to do in phase one, we talked uh, previously about awareness, is we've got to be what I call feeding that funnel. Is we need people through to the website. We need to begin those email leads and so on. So there's some ways that we can be doing this. Um, first is competitions, huge, huge fan of competitions. In my previous job, I used to, as a social media manager, used to run them week in, week out, be really obsessive because they are the best thing to drive traffic through to your site and build up the number of people that are engaging with your Facebook page. Simple giveaways, give away your product. It's not going to cost a lot. Hopefully you've got quite high margins on your product. Just get people to like the post to enter. There's plenty of plugins for most uh, e-commerce sites if you want to go and run a contest there and get leads. But however you run them, um, just feed that funnel with competition. It's going to work so, so well. Second thing we could do to feed the funnel is to run lead ads. Um, this is an example in the UK. Um, we've got a series of Great British Bake Off. I hear it's quite popular at the moment in the US. Um, but basically, this is a brand that sells cake making supplies. So they themed their lead magnet uh, uh, around that TV series. So you've got that relevance, uh, re relevancy in your ads. And just give people a recipe ebook. You know, this, this isn't kind of rocket science. But you get those leads, you can then remarket those leads as long as you want, basically for free once you've got those leads there. Um, you can also feed the funnel with some page like ads. Um, now, you might be saying, hey, Paul, I haven't run page like ads for a few years. And I've been in the same boat, but I've started to run them. Um, again, not in huge volumes. We're, we're just ticking along a few dollars a day. We're not putting our main budget into them. But they keep your page really fresh. Like Facebook uh, just likes to see that interaction on your page. It will then show the post organically to more people. Um, it's all about price on these. If you're paying two bucks per page like, no point. If you can get them at you know, 10, 20 cents, then I'd be putting, you know, trickling through a few dollars a day on these. So this is secondary tactic, but not something you shouldn't overlook there. Um, page like ads, they used to be really like a letterboxed kind of image format there. I think it's something like 2.7 to 1 image ratio. Nobody could see anything on your ad. Now they're square, then we can really fill up that ad space there. If you've got Facebook groups for your uh, brand, and I hope you have, because that's the best way to drive sales long term, that's probably a whole nother webinar there. Um, you can run Facebook group ads there. Um, Facebook doesn't really like it if you run a standalone ad with a URL pointing to Facebook. It gets very confused. Um, but you can use a page post and you can link your uh, Facebook group in there, maybe sneak in a bit.ly link and just boost that page post. Um, works very well. What I find with this is it's a bit of a slow burn. If you look at the one day um, conversions, you know, one day after clicking, there's not very many. After seven days, not very many either. But if you start looking at over the course of 28 days, uh, that group can be very good to get lots of exposure and then get the sales in there. So hopefully that gives you some ideas for phase one that we want to be testing and optimizing and really feeding that funnel there and redoing really the preparation by reading those guides. Now we move on to the main event. So we're talking Thanksgiving Cyber Monday now. So our kind of ads are changing rather than those nice kind of fluffy feed the funnel ads. Hey, you know, this example from Walmart. Hey, have you got cats? That's really nice. No, we don't be doing this anymore. This is when people are expecting to see purchase ads. They're there. They're ready to buy. So same retailer. We're looking at another Walmart ad here, but we can see blunt. It's carousel ad. Right. Do you want to buy the laptop? Do you want to buy the Disney fashion doll? This is the price. Click on it and buy now. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking for. That's what people are expecting. So that's why we do all that warm up, all that awareness engagement in phase one. And then we're radically switching in phase two there. Um, some little tips on these. You can use your product feeds. This is a example from Google that you can be using your product feeds. And we'll talk later as well just briefly about Facebook dynamic product ads that feed into dynamic product catalogs. This is a great way of showcasing your products there. So again, this is a whole webinar there. So I'm just kind of planting that seed there, but you can do some more research after this webinar there. In terms of what audiences that we're going to be using for phase two, the main event, 
then where possible, try and drive customers to your store and also really use our best audiences. We engage with our old customers and anybody that's uh, engaged with you. Now, something I'm mentioning here about uh, driving customers to your store is the fact that still in the US, over 90% of our commerce happens in store. So e-commerce is still quite small. Something we overlook, we think that, you know, Amazon's huge and everybody's moving online. Uh, it's not the case. People still buy in stores. They like to touch and feel products and buy it there. So if you are kind of like a business that has got bricks and mortars locations, don't get obsessed with converting everybody online. Like I'm 100% for using Google and Facebook ads, but think about how you can combine those with offline as well. That's where the money really is there. Um, I'm from the UK, you can probably tell from my accent. Even though we're probably one of the leading countries for e-commerce, at least 85% of commerce is still offline and only about 15% e-commerce there. So good opportunities. And we're gonna cover how to re-engage with customers in just a second. So let's look, this is an example from Facebook um, of some of your best audiences that you could be using. The same kind of things apply to Google. So your best audience is going to be um, purchasers, then you could be looking at your leads, then you could be looking at website visitors, your traffic, then some engagement custom audiences, and then some lookalikes. So lookalikes are when we change to cold traffic, but rather than just target it randomly using interest, we can use some lookalikes. So we're just going to spend a couple of minutes having a proper dive into those. So purchasers. Um, quite simply, people that purchased from you uh, before most are uh, the people most likely to purchase from you again, especially if they bought from you last holiday season, uh, you want to be targeting those to go and buy this holiday season. So how do we do this? We can use the Facebook pixel, only one downside, only track sales for 180 days. Um, so we can use um, on the flip side our email list um, that tracks people all time but you only get a match rate for B2C of around about 60 to 70%. So kind of solution is we use both audiences. And we'll have a quick look at those now. So purchases, this is in Ads Manager. If you go into um, custom audiences, you can there choose your pixel, choose that purchase pixel event, and you can choose the time window up to 180 days. Um, these, these audiences sync straight up with AdEspresso if you're using AdEspresso. If you want email subscribers, you can upload a customer e email list. You can also do this in AdEspresso as well with the Asset Manager, but that's pretty straightforward, just the standard CSV file. Something that we want to consider as well is that life's too short for, you know, every time you get new purchases, having to export a new list from your CRM and import it into Facebook as a new custom audience. Instead, recommend using AdEspresso Data Sync. Um, if you've got a AdEspresso subscription, it's one of the tools included. And so we've got about uh, 10 of the most popular CRMs. And so you can just create that bri uh, bridge there. Um, great thing with the data sync is it's going to automatically sync your list uh, every few minutes. And also, if you're using lookalike audiences based off your um, email list, then they're going to dynamically update because your uh, custom audience is going to dynamically update. So where possible, save as much time as possible in Q4 by using those data syncs. Um, another audience that we could be using, their previous website visitors, very similar to creating an audience of purchasers. Just instead of like segmenting out by in the drop down menu by purchase event, we can just choose all website visitors. Again, you choose the time, time window, give it a name, and you can go and target those people. Um, some other audiences there. We cover this. If you go into YouTube, we've also got a Facebook targeting blueprint webinar. Um, <clears throat> but we, we'll discuss it more in depth on that webinar. But what you can see here is some of these engagement audiences. Like we can be targeting video viewers, people that have uh, opened our forms. That's our lead ads, people that have said they're interested in an event, uh, Instagram engagers, Facebook engagers. See, that's another reason why we want to run those competitions. Get people to like our Facebook post, run that competition. You can then retarget them with purchase ads over uh, Black Friday. Very useful tactics there. Um, you get some options for, once you choose one of those custom audiences. You get a drop down menu. Um, generally, go with the defaults. There are tool tips on them. If you hover over them, they'll tell you exactly what they're for. Most of those audiences valid for up to 365 days. So you can go a bit further away. Um, I think it's just lead form audiences, which are 90 days. Um, but they're on the tooltip, it'll tell you what the maximum audience is there. 
then if we do need to go to cold traffic, then like I said, rather than just targeting at random or using interests, which um, aren't always the best, we can use lookalikes where we give Facebook a seed audience and it'll find people with very similar characteristics. For e-commerce, recommend using value-based lookalikes. This is where Facebook can use a source audience of your purchase pixel and it'll create an audience of people with um, that are similar. But what it uses on this is um, it's using people that purchased, it's then looking at the recency of that purchase um, and giving that more weight. It's looking at the frequency, so people that purchase more than once, incredibly valuable, and also how much they're spending. So, you know, we're not just looking at like people that maybe have just purchased once, we can really segment it out there. Um, I've got a question from Marie saying, is that AdEspresso software? For those, um, those value-based lookalikes, you go and create those within Ads Manager, but they will sync straight up with um, AdEspresso there. Um, but yeah, it's really simple. It's just like two or three clicks to go and create those value-based audiences. You know, these things used to take forever, and so we didn't used to do them. Now, a few clicks and you can create these audiences. Um, some examples here of lookalike seed audiences, kind of going from like low quality to high quality. If you're starting off and you don't have those uh, purchase audiences, you can use page fans, you can use video views. They're a bit vague, but better than nothing. Then we can move on to recent page engagers. Then we bring some recency into it. Um, then website visitors, that shows more intent. They've had to click through to your site. Leads, even higher intent. They've had to give up their email address. And then we move on to purchases. And then we could segment audiences of purchases who spent more than X number of dollars, people that purchased more than once. We can upload a customer lifetime value file. You can use it from your CRM, um, from Shopify, export a list of all time customers uh, with that customer value. You can upload that. So that can be quite useful. Or just use those value based lookalikes like we saw there. So again, this is what you know, that's a whole other webinar. We've got that Facebook targeting blueprint webinar, which just gives you an idea, hopefully of what kind of audiences that we can start off with. On Google, um, like we were talking about um, earlier in this section, we really wanna drive traffic where possible through to stores. And Google's got some good um, tools to do this, is that you can use local extensions across search shopping display and YouTube, and you can decide to um, tweak your bids there to try and really maximize showing ads to people close to your stores and drive them um, into the store, especially when the store's open, that's gonna be the main thing. And maybe at weekends when people are off work there. So plenty of opportunities on Google as well. Also on Google, just like on Facebook, we wanna be using custom audiences and you can use remarketing lists um, based on customer match. And a little tool for that is you can use AdEspresso data sync. So you can like um, upload your um, CSV file and then you can create a, um, a Google Ads custom audience there. So that's something to look out for in AdEspresso. Of course, if we want a successful Black Friday kind of holiday campaign, we need to have some offers. And this is from the Shopify handbook on what kind of offers that we want to be using in Q4. Um, this is not saying you have to use these, this is just surveying their top 50 brands that are using Shopify. Site-wide discounts, always going to be popular. You can use ones on specific products. Coupon codes, um, free shipping, and free shipping by order value. This is quite a nice one. I think where you can get people to spend more can be useful. And again, Shopify reflect that, is that some suggestions that they've got to increase that order value is, for example, if somebody spends $250, they get $50 off, and so on there. The idea is we don't just want people spending low dollar amounts. Where possible, we want to be gating some of these offers so that they spend as much as possible. As we saw earlier, that your average order value doesn't necessarily increase. Um, you just get more conversions. But be clever with some of the offers and try and get that AOV up there. If you are using uh, discount codes, a little tip for you. Remember, most of you, well, not most, but quite a few of your conversions are gonna happen on mobile. Um, these long, complex codes, impossible. People probably don't have a little notepad with them. And copy and pasting on mobile from one tab to another it is a nightmare. So we want a simple code if you do have to use codes, like just Black Friday or Holiday. This kind of like, you know, ABC, one, two, three, X, Y, Z codes are just aren't gonna work there. So keep it very simple make it optimized for mobile. Some other tips there, Small Business Saturday. This is 30th of November, the day after Black Friday. Um, for some reason, I think because we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in the UK, in the UK it's actually a week later on 7th of December. But American Express put their full backing behind this. You can Google this, go onto the Amex website. 
but if you do have a small business if you have bricks and mortar something to capitalize on you know all the all the big box retailers there they're hammering ads sometimes it's difficult to compete see where you can use some advantages uh, shop small shop local something that we can do again so many sales are actually made in store see how you can take advantage of that there um, there's quite a few promotional materials they can download for free from the shop small amex website there then giving tuesday okay it's not quite a big deal but this is we can like you know put a different angle on your ads is that we've been relentlessly hammering people with buy 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 ads over the weekend and then we can just go and show some of our social side here so if you support a charity you do you, some of your stuff do some volunteer voluntary work maybe this is the time to change some of the ads um this is from the tenuity playbook um generally you'll find that people pay more um in that 18 to 44 group um if you if you've got that good cause there so that's why i recommend that you promote it older age groups not quite so impressed by it but it's still quite a quite a sizable chunk there so it could be useful to put those in your ads there on Giving Tuesday. Uh, that's the day after Cyber Monday. Okay, so we've packed in as many sales as possible over that holiday weekend. And of course, we get into December and we don't want to take our foot off the gas. We want to keep those sales coming in. So let's look at some ways of doing this. So phase three, maximizing sales in December. <clears throat> One way they can do this is to do bundles and really try and get your up sales here. Um, this is a, a toiletries brand. Um, I actually bought from them this week. That's why I thought I'd show you this ad here. Um, they normally sell like little 200 milliliter shower gels. Instead, they're trying to get you to buy two liters of shower gels, literally 10 times more, by saying, hey, here's some big bottles and we're going to bundle four of them together and we're going to give you a free tote bag and some offers as well. This is what we want to do, not just get more customers in, really get up that average order value. So see how we can maximize sales by doing bundles, bigger packs in uh, December there. Um, this is an ad from American Express. Now, it's not an e-commerce ad, but I think it's very useful to show you that it's worthwhile and um, still kind of nurturing your current customers and trying to get them to purchase again. So if you take out an uh, American Express card, they don't stop their ads then. In fact, most of their ads uh, you'll see are after you go and take out an Amex card. And they're then trying to get you to use their office site, their hotel booking site, and so on. And this is what you can do on Facebook with your custom audiences. You can build that audience of purchases and you can, you know, you can put a time window of say like 30 days. So recent purchases and you can try and get them to buy more. Um, you can upload that email list, however you do it with your custom audiences there. Don't you think that, you know, the classic funnel, it doesn't end with a purchase. That's only halfway through the funnel. That's when we want to get those repeat purchases there. Again, lots you can do on Google there in, in that kind of maintaining sales phase. Um, they're actually getting really clever with some of their extensions. You can put in countdown timers for your deals there. Um, you, yeah, you can you can really use their shopping ads for like price annotations there. So make the most of everything that Google gives you to really make your ads stand out. You know, just think that the volume of ads is going to be really high. Use all those tricks there in your toolbox, and that's really going to help you. Um, something you can do with dynamic product ads, and I wish we had more time to discuss this, but you can certainly do things like upsell ads. This is where on Facebook, you've got your main product feed from your website, but you can then create product sets. And what you can do is get quite clever. <clears throat> and we target people that visit one product uh, set with a different product set. Simple example, imagine you're Apple, people have viewed your range of iPads and iPad minis, you would then want to retarget them with an iPad Pro. And you can adapt this to any business, just think how you can get that upsell. So you, people that have viewed uh, product set A, you then show them a premium product set B there. And really the, the take home message for phase three, maximizing sales, is that people's priorities change when they're shopping is that it's not so much about the discounts and deals it's more logistics it's more like can they get gift wrapping can they send it straight to the recipient uh, free express shipping very very important more important than discounts uh, guaranteed shipping in time for uh, Christmas and gift cards gift cards are something where if you don't sell them you're probably leaving quite a lot of money on the table there um, there is something, there's a little day called Free Shipping Day on Saturday, December 14th. I, th I think it's really gone out of fashion now, but it just kind of shows you that it, it's when retailers kind of give free shipping codes that guarantee express shipping before Christmas. This is the sort of things that's important, very, very different to Black Friday there.
Uh, post holiday season, this is my favorite time. This is actually when I spend significant amount of ad spends, but when people really overlook it. Um, and, and this is when we go into January and after Christmas, uh, some stats from Facebook, 40%, 46% of shoppers say that they uh, take advantage of post holiday sales there in January. So really good money. And the reason I love it so much is let's go back to that graph that we saw earlier of ad pricing. So we've been battling with high ad pricing for three months in Q4. It's then super cheap. You know, this is why gyms and holidays are really promoted heavily on Facebook. It's not just because New Year's resolutions and people planning their holidays. It's also because they, they wait until it's really, really cheap for ads. And then they don't want to compete against the holiday retailers and they come out and play in Q1. And so for some of my e-commerce retailers, I put in significant budgets then, really, really good um, value for money on the ad pricing. Again, we can get really clever if you want to with dynamic product ads. You can use cr uh, cross-sell. So cross-sell is where people that have bought one product set, you can then retarget them with um, accessories in another product set. I'll give you an example now. Um, I just use uh, Apple again for convenience. I'm not saying they run these ads. They tend not to do too many Facebook ads. Um, but I think it's an example where everybody can understand. If somebody buys an iPad, then you could create a product set of iPad accessories and retarget those people that purchase those and say, hey, do you want to go and buy an Apple Pencil? Do you want to go and buy a cover? Do you need a charger? Do you want a third party pencil? Whatever there, that's the sort of things that we want to do is maximize those purchases and get them to purchase all the add-ons, all the bundles there. Um, also take care of your existing customers. Um, you know, we don't just have to get them to purchase. We can also take really good care of them using ads. So ask for reviews, maybe use a simple gift card incentive, try and get those um, sales there from them. Uh, so try and get those reviews from them rather than sales. Um, this is going to help long-term growth uh, once you've got reviews on your website. Run some messenger campaigns for customer service. Maybe people are angry about the your brand. Maybe they didn't receive the product. It's broken. There's something wrong with the shipping. Uh, people these days, unfortunately, don't pick up the phone. They maybe not even email. Instead, they go and rant on review sites and tell their friends. Run a messenger ad campaign, and they can just easily from their couch initiate a conversation, um, and you can hand your customer service by messenger. Again, if you go onto the Ad Espresso channel on YouTube, you can view our webinar on Messenger bots with Larry Kim from Mobile Monkey. You could be running referrals friend scheme. Um, the easy way to get more sales is to get your current customers to go and refer people. Um, really, really good tactic. I run this every month for some of my brands. And upgrades. Um, if somebody's got a one-off purchase, get them to take out a subscription. If they've got a one-month recurring subscription, get them to take a six or 12-month recurring subscriptions. You can see all these ways. We really just want to maximize that average order value, recurring sales, and really look after the customers there running our ads. So I'd like to thank everybody for sticking with me during this webinar. I can see that our numbers have actually grown as the webinar has gone on. So thank you there. And so I'd like to give you a little reward, um, exclusive webinar offer here. Um, if you go to adespresso.com forward slash AE uh, hyphen webinar, we'll give you a free 14 day trial of Adespresso, but also 30% of the first three months there. So even if you just run ads during Q4, um, we can simplify it for you, uh, especially on the split testing and the analysis and reporting side and creating these custom audiences by using Adespresso. Also, we try not to be just a software tool. We have Adespresso University. Um, it's a private Facebook group um, exclusive to customers. We've got nearly 7,000 marketers in there. You can ask questions all day long. We're going to help you. Um, we've got exclusive video courses, both by myself and by Tori, who's handling our Q&A today. Um, they're going to really help you with your advertising. We've got all our webinars archived there. We've got all our $1,000 experiments, lots of goodies for you there. So that's really going to help you succeed. And that's all free if you're an Ad Espresso customer. Also, you get access to one-to-one uh, -one access to myself and the rest of the team. We have a services tab where you can access our marketplace services. This is where you can book one-on-one -on -one, uh, power hours for coaching, and we can give you detailed strategic advice on your ads, uh, both for Google and for Facebook in a range of languages. And we do campaign reviews. Campaign reviews are more tactical. They're, they're kind of like 10-minute videos, just walking through one campaign, telling you whether you've got the right optimization, the right placements, the right audiences, and so on there. So they can get you up to speed in no time. 
So that's uh, another benefit of being an Ad Espresso customer. Also, quick uh, mention of our next webinar. Um, next month, we're going to have a deep dive into Google. And we're privileged to have Kiara from the Google Milan team joining us. And she's going to be presenting a webinar uh, completely free on how to master conversion tracking for Google Ads. And if you want to sign up to that, then just go to adespresso.com forward slash webinars and signups are active now. So thank you everybody for joining us today and I can see loads of questions. Uh, so keep those coming in, just um, go into the questions box in uh, GoToWebinar and we'll get us through to as many as we can. Um, but I'm gonna hand over to Tori now to see um, what questions we've got coming in during the webinar. Uh, great presentation, Paul. Uh, can you hear me? We can, loud and clear. Perfect. Uh, so our first question was from someone who couldn't join today, but they sent in a question. Uh, our question is, when testing ads inside of a Facebook ad set, uh, how many variations would you recommend? Yeah, this is a, a, a really important question is that split testing, as we saw, is really going to drive the cost down. But you can't be split testing too much at once, otherwise you'll dilute your efforts. Um, I quite like using two headlines, two images and two ad texts giving people an either or choice, uh, classic A-B testing. So two by two, um, we're, we're kind of gonna have, uh, two by two by two would be eight ads there. Um, now we need enough budget for this, and this will depend on your CPA, your cost per acquisition, is that if you've got a very high CPA, you'll have to do less testing at once. Otherwise you just won't get enough data, enough purchases. If you get really cheap conversions, then you could increase the amount of split testing. But really it's a process, is that what we want to do is, so we test two images, or like we saw earlier on, two videos. We could try an animation video versus face to camera. And we saw in that case, people like the animation. So what we can then do is in the next round of testing, test two, three, four more animations and keep going on that process. Like in um, ad text, I might be trying emojis uh, versus no emojis. And if people like the emojis, then I can test different emojis in the next ad text. So don't think we have to throw every ad variation out there at once. Instead, there's a process. As we test, we take forward the winners, we ditch the losers, and then we iterate on the winners, and we kind of like lather, wash, rinse, repeat, and so on there. Awesome. Uh, next question here is from Megan. How would you recommend non-e-commerce brands compete for ad space during the holiday season? Ah, really good question. I'm glad you, you uh, brought this up, Megan. So first thing I will say is that if you're doing B2B, and, and that you don't see a big increase in sales. Like sometimes B2B does, I know we run sometimes like promotions at, at Hootsuite, um, but if you just don't find a, a big uptick in Q4, I, you know, take it easy on your ad spend, just go to your best audiences, maybe just leave retargeting turned on. I've even said to a lot of businesses for B2B, you know, just, just take December off, go and chill, enjoy the holiday season, don't run ads, come back strong in January. That's where we saw that phase four. Um, can be extremely useful for you. Um, it's not just about the ad prices. Ad prices are three times higher as we saw, um, but also just customer psychology. Is that, are you really looking to purchase like a new piece of software and evaluate it in December? Probably not, you're more likely to go to Christmas parties. Um, so B2B, really back off your ad spend, come back stronger in uh, Q1. If you're doing other things, um, you know, you, you're kind of like still consumer, but you're not doing e-commerce. Um, just think of other things you can do. Can you be driving that traffic locally? Certainly in December, people don't rely on, on couriers and shipping, especially in the US where shipping times are quite long. So that could be really good. Um, you could be running some event ads as well, try and get people in person. Um, I've certainly seen it where a lot of um, stores, if they've got like food products, they they give like free tasting, um, you know, of, these, of the food and drink, really try and drive people in store, have that festive feel, that can be really good. Um, but yeah, just keep an eye on the results. And if you're not doing like uh, commerce, whether it's bricks and water or e-commerce, probably back off your ad spend a bit and then go and, um, just go and front load it during the year in Q1. Great, our next question is from Costa. Costa asks, what's the best approach to advertise on Facebook via Ad Espresso to reach fresh customers? Uh, he currently does not have any retargeting audiences available, so from scratch. 
Okay, so we covered this more in the Facebook Ads uh, Blueprint webinar that you can watch on YouTube. But you can start something very simple as that you could be running a competition, just get people to like the post to enter. And then you can build an audience of uh, Facebook engagers. You could be doing the same on Instagram. Um, remember, all these audiences, they dynamically update, which means if we say create an audience of seven day engagers, we don't have to create it every seven days. Um, very, very simple um, if you need to get audiences fast is put some videos out there. You could run those for video views. You can then build a video view audience. I mean, preferably I'd rather be like capturing leads and, and website traffic and so on. But you can see that there's, you know, if we're just starting from zero, we can do that there. And then very, very quickly from those audiences, we want to start building lookalikes as well. Um, you can also go into Facebook Audience Insights tool. Again, we cover this in the Targeting Blueprint webinar. Um, but you can then do some research in there for competitors and get an idea of what interest to target. So there's lots of tools and lots of custom audiences that allow you to get up to speed in no time. But the take home message is the sooner that you start, then the sooner you're gonna have those audiences in place for Q4. We do not wanna be experimenting once we come to November and your ad prices are gonna be very, very high there. Great one, um, Kautz says thank you. Uh, next question here from Nat. Any tips for app promotion during the holiday season? Oh, it's something I don't do a lot of app promotion, but I think you really want that kind of, uh, as, as with any campaigns, is there some sense of urgency? So what's this app going to do? Is it going to allow you to get you know, restaurant bookings for the best Christmas parties and sold out venues. Is it gonna give you a discount? Um, that could be very useful in, in Q4, anything like that. You know, if, if you've got like a rival to Uber, then, you know, maybe you can say we don't have surge price, surge charging or whatever it is. So really just see what the app is about and say, right, how is this gonna help people with their lives in Q4 and the holiday season? Tailor it there. Um, again, if your app's something completely unrelated, I don't know, maybe it's a accounting software and, and maybe it's not tax season or something, then back off the ad spend and come back stronger in Q1. I'm, I'm a real favor of having my ad spend just like based on different quarters and, and across the year. What happens with some advertisers and some agencies is they just allocate their ad spend per month. And it's like, okay, I've got to spend this in December. I don't care about the ad prices. And that's just crazy. Like just like back off on, on Q4 and then put it into January. But yeah, where possible, look at how you can help people over the holiday season. Uh, download those playbooks. There's so much data. It's not just about strategy in that Google, Facebook, uh, Shopify and Tenuity guides. There's lots of little nuggets that you can use to try and write some of your ad copy in there. Uh, right, and that's something that you can also create on Google as well. I know Google supports app campaign, so uh, multi-channel there. Uh, next question from Dixon. Uh, fresh e-commerce store with no sales. When should we start avoiding competing Facebook ads, assuming we have no confidence? I mean, the thing with Facebook ads and, and same with Google or anything, so you've got full tracking, so you can kind of see what's working, what's not. So you can keep an eye on your results, uh, kind of day to day, week by week on there. Um, so yeah, if you're not sure about whether you can, you know, get, get through uh, Q4 with the high ad prices, um, just, just put it out there and, and keep an eye on the prices on there. Um, but as we saw those strategies, the more that you can be doing now, then you can get up to speed very, very fast, even if you haven't been running any ads through the year, then it's not going to take you that long to get the data and split testing. Um, something kind of like related to this um, is I got some questions by email on what kind of products work for Q4. Um, now, if you're a new advertiser and, and you haven't done this before, the magic price point for you is around about 40 bucks. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I call this a magic price point is it's something where the, there's a reasonable amount of revenue so you can afford your ad spend. Um, but it's still what I'd call a one click purchase. If you do high ticket items, you know, we're talking 50, 100, $200 here, is there's a, there's a long lead phase there. There's a lot of consideration. People will look at reviews, they go and look at competitors, they, they go and download your eBooks and things like that first. And, and that's really hard to then get enough data in. So if you've got that kind of one click purchase, some cheap items, start with that. Um, yeah, your, your end goal for e-commerce might be to sell real premium items, but if you can really start off by promoting those 
kind of 30 40 dollar items you're going to get that data you can rapidly split test you can rapidly build up your audiences and that's how you succeed in q4 as a new advertiser there Okay, great. So I think that was the last of our questions here in case um, anyone has any more. Oh, one more popped up. Uh, are lead ads important for e-commerce stores? Um, yes, I would say that they are. Um, certainly what we want to be doing is in Q4 is looking at our other marketing channels is that if Facebook ads are going to be really, really expensive, then let, let's see how, how else we can market to people. And emails are great. You can automate the sequences. Um, you can put those custom audiences in place for Google as well. Um, and, and they're just very, very cheap. So I'm a big fan of leads. Well, all, all I will say is two things. One is look at lead quality. So when the lead's coming in um, throughout the year, I look at the, I tag them in my CRM and I look at the open rates and the unsubscribed rates and the click rates and if there's any kind of purchases coming from them. There's no point in getting thousands and thousands of leads if they're garbage. So, so one of my clients actually, they've decided to um, change the from like prospecting with lead ads, and use them more for retargeting to to build that relationship with people. They're paying more for the leads, but they're quite happy with the quality now. Um, second point is just look at the price. You know, if you're selling like a that forty dollar product, if you're paying two dollars a lead, it might not work. You'd have to look at the conversion rates. We need quite a high conversion rate. Um, if you can get that, that lead very, very cheap, then it could work for you. Um, it really depends on the industry, what you need to pay for leads. Some of my clients are happy paying quite a few dollars per lead. But yeah, just look at the price there. It's a bit of a numbers game in Q4. You need cheap leads. You need to be getting good open rates and low on subscribe rates. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And yeah, if you've got any questions, then um, just email them to me, pull out at Espresso or interact on any of our social channels. And we're going to put the replay on YouTube probably in a couple of hours. Uh, so good luck, everybody, with your Q4 sales there.